Tom Ross is a successful attorney with a major law firm. He has a big office with a fabulous view. He and his wife are planning a ski trip. So you want to ski on Sunday the 10th? Yes, right. And so we'll get equipment then on Saturday afternoon right. after we check in. Right. Tom loves to travel. On the wall here on the left are all pictures that we took of places that we've been together with the family. Pictures of Europe and South Africa and Paris and, and so on. And he loves to golf. His lifestyle would be the envy of most were it not for the fact that Tom is totally blind. In 2002, routine surgery to remove non-cancerous polyps ended with tragic results. I checked in the hospital on a Friday afternoon and my first memory after going into the surgery is about four or five months after that Friday afternoon. He later learned that surgeons failed to properly reconnect his blood supply. Essentially what happened is the large intestines died. So 24 hours after I was out of the surgery, uh, all kinds of bad things started to happen and ultimately what occurred is a is an onset of what is known as sepsis, which is an extremely virulent, highly toxic, abnormally high mortality rate infection. The infection spread quickly and so did Tom's health crisis. I have no large intestines anymore. Heart stopped, pancreas stopped, lungs stopped, liver stopped, kidneys stopped. Uh, my vo right, one of my vocal cords, you only have two, was destroyed. He lost the nerves in his feet, a finger was amputated, and his optic nerves were burned out. For months, Tom battled for his life on a daily basis, slowly regaining his strength, but not his eyesight. Doctors told him there's nothing they can do. Angry and depressed, he stayed in a hospital bed for 11 months until a frustrated, devastated Joe Ellen could take no more. And her comment to me was, you know, you're not trying. And I thought about it and I concluded that she was right. It really wasn't fair to her and that I wasn't really trying. I was still feeling sorry for myself and wanting to blame somebody else for what had happened. And at that moment, that very moment, I just resolved that uh, from thenceforward, I was going to try. That these were the cards that we now had, and I could spend the balance of my life uh, laying in that bed feeling sorry for myself, or I could get the hell out of the bed and get to work. And uh, so that's what I did. And he did it with the assistance of Lighthouse, a nonprofit organization dedicated to preserving vision and helping the visually impaired regain their independence. They meet other people who are going through it. They meet our staff who are visually impaired, healthy, happy, married, in relationships, making money, having a good time. And they realize it's not the end of their lives. It's just a, a new beginning. Tom couldn't leave his home, so Lighthouse came to him. Soon, he was deftly navigating down hallways, through rooms, touching countertops, brushing past plants and couches and corners, all landmarks on his journey to independence. He learned how to use his computer with the help of new cutting-edge software. Unread, unread, not selected, nighttime attachment, Ross Thomas. It's reading me the header, actually, of a email I sent to myself this morning from the office. As Tom reclaimed his fast-paced life, he also learned to slow down, to cherish the simple pleasure of waking up his daughters for school. The first thing I have to do is I have to give daughter number one a back scratch and, <laughs> and a rubber feed and scratch her head a little bit and get her up and moving. And then I go to daughter number two and retreat the repeat that same process. That's good work, isn't it? It is good work. That's work I can do for a long time to come. I'm going to be unhappy when they get so old that they think that their daddy doesn't have to give them a back rub. Before long, he was even making Joe Ellen her morning coffee. One of the things I had said is I'll know Tom's home 
when he brings me coffee in the morning. That was, he'd wake me up every morning with coffee. And so he, every morning now, he makes the coffee on his own, brings it into our bedroom. It's been a painful and difficult journey, but with the help of his family and Lighthouse, Tom has recaptured a life of simple tasks and profound joys. A life that's filled with purpose, adventure, and activity. Pretty good. It can be done. I, I can go skiing, snow skiing. I can do water skiing. I can go to a movie. I do watch television. I do go out to dinner. I go to basketball games. But now, Tom has a bigger purpose. He's become a lighthouse himself, warning of an impending public health crisis. A rapid increase in age-related diseases that can lead to blindness is now colliding with our massive age wave to create the perfect storm. What we see today coming at us over the next 20 years, which is not a very long time, I might add, the next 20 years is, is staggering. And if we don't begin to do things today to be prepared to deal with that kind of sociological phenomena that's just around the corner for us, it's going to have very, very dire consequences. And Lighthouse is trying to get ready for that. Tom hopes to help others avoid what he's been through and to direct those who need help to Lighthouse. After they've been here five weeks, we can't get rid of them. You know, they just want to stay here. They've had the times of their lives. They've met new friends, people. They, they realize they're not the only ones who are going through this. For himself, his wishes are simple. He'd like to see his daughters once again. I wish I knew what they look like. I would like to, uh, I hope I live long enough so that stem cell research will become a reality and I'll be able to replace those uh, Burned out, burned out optic nerves. It'd be kind of fun to see my daughters before they get married or before I die. 